What makes a perfect story arc? Is it a good villain? Or maybe a good cast of characters? Yeah, those can help. But I believe the perfect arc must be unique and interesting. While moving along each new installment or each scene, not pausing once for an arbitrary conversation, the Aiken Island arc has been displaying this idea and dynamic perfectly. Aiken Island is without a doubt the perfect One Piece arc. Let me explain. Before we get started, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, it would help out quite a bit. Or maybe throwing me a like to show you like these types of videos. One thing I hear a lot about in hating reading One Piece arcs weekly is a very fun thing called arc fatigue, which is when it feels like the story is getting boring or like it isn't moving at all. And it usually happens near the beginning of One Piece arc. Let me stress that word usually, because in Wano it happened in the centuries long arc 2, or act 2, the same word. Anyway, Egghead has yet to feel like it's not moving. Every chapter into the story adds new valuable information to the arc. Another thing that may be helping is how much we've been moving around in Egghead. We've gone from Egghead to Elbath to even the Reverie. This constant moving in a new cataclysmic event every new location we end up is why I have yet to feel any sort of arc fatigue, and I heavily doubt I ever will in Egghead. I asked before if a good arc was defined by its villain. Now let's talk about Egghead, Egghead's villain. That wasn't apparent until chapter 1078. York, the satellite used for exclusively for eating, sleeping, and defecating, who we still don't know much about because the next chapter, we enter Elbath. And as of right now, waiting for chapter 1085, we still haven't gone back to Egghead. The interesting thing about York is her motive of wanting to be a celestial dragon, to be something she can't. Unless she can. All right, crazy stupid theory time, but Egghead is an island of insane technology, so surely there's a time machine there. There's a Paramecia fruit based on time travel. And she's like, oh, you can't go back to the past, I can only send you to the future. What if York walks up, like there's a time machine on Egghead, she walks up and is like, hey look, a time machine. Then goes back in time and it just becomes a celestial dragon just because, oh, I can't be one in the present, so might as well be one in the past. It would be pretty silly goofy and I kind of want to see it happen because I, I, I want to see York in an astronaut costume. I think that would be very funny. York killed her brother, Shaka, and had no remorse for it at all. She is cynical and is... Next level Doe Flamingo. And even worse, no one suspected her to be the traitor. We knew there was a traitor, but we weren't thinking it was York. Oh no, it wouldn't be York. Everyone was so focused on Lilith and Shaka that why in the world would it ever be York? Well, guess what? It was York. I have to say, Egghead has shattered the One Piece arc layout of landing on the island, having fun on the island, learning the history of the island, and Luffy fighting the villain, just pulling up and pummeling the villain. They do land and have fun on the island because they have to land on the island, and the Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs machine could not be passed up. But the giant fight that, that's supposed to happen at the end of the arc happened at the very beginning with Rob Lucci. They still haven't learned much of the island's history, which is devastating. I mean, they know all the technologies actually from like 900 years in the past. Uh, and York is most definitely take, getting taken down by anyone but Luffy. There's no way in the world Luffy goes from beating up the most powerful creature in the world to, um... 
a giant robot lady. And may I say, did did Oda mean by most powerful creature in the world? Like he's the most powerful being in the world. Like just th- that's it. He is the most powerful being in the world, or he's the most powerful non-human in the world. If which which one did he mean? Because I always interpret it as k- kind of yeah. He's the strongest living cr- thing on the planet. So yeah, tell me what you think in the comments. The last thing I have to say is, we all went into this, I like, thinking, from that one panel, where Lilith comes out of the mech and is like, I'm Dr. Vegapunk, we all thought this was gonna be a Frankie, like, like, Ennis Lobby, or the whole cake, but it's not, Frankie's done nothing, he's just turned himself to stone, and while that is devastating, that this was his chance, this was Frankie's chance. This was the arc made for him. He literally spent his two-year time skip on Vegapunk's uh, home island. And they just... He just decided, no, this it won't be a Frankie arc. Unless somehow it does become a Frankie arc. Like, miracle turnaround right there. But even though it's not a Frankie arc, it's still a great arc. It's still... The perfect arc, perhaps. It's it's still a good arc, and um maybe maybe Oda decided no Frankie uh he doesn't need an arc he, maybe Frank may, well Oda already hates Sanji so maybe he hates Frankie too yeah I don't know well, I mean I am not Oda so I don't know why it's not a Frankie arc but I would have loved to see a Frankie arc but it's just not a Frankie arc. I'm gonna cry, like, like Frankie. In conclusion, Egghead is an adventure arc with many emotions sprinkled throughout, like, despair when Shaka died. Man, I was devastated when Shaka died. Actually, his death scene to me is, like, hilarious, like, because Tekking 101 pointed it out. York is massive compared to Shaka. So the gun she used, it was proportional to her. So his head should have been just blasted straight off, just obliterated. She should have, like, vaporized his head. But no, he's got shot with a normal bullet. It, yeah, he he said, like, she should have been holding the equivalent of, like, a cannon. Just in her hand. But it's pretty devastating that Sh- Shaka didn't get his head eviscerated. Uh, it's a, it's a mash re- it's a a, a, master, a masterfully written arc where arc critique isn't going to be a problem probably. Uh, the arc is a testament to how beautifully and divinely Oda plans out and writes his stories. Thanks for watching. I said it once, but I'll say it again. If you wouldn't mind sharing, subscribing, or liking, it would help out a lot. And please, let me know your opinions in the comments, because I I know you have opinions. Catch you later. Ow. Igator.